In this video, I'll teach you how to structure a calisthenics workout to build muscle. I'll teach you what order to put your exercises in, how to pair your exercises, the best rest time between exercises, tempo you should use, exercise selection. I'll teach you the difference between the primary workout and the supplementary workout and what inner core stabilization exercise I like to use at the end of an upper body workout. After your warm up, the first priority in the workout is the primary workout. And these are the big movements like dips that are compound movements that use multiple muscle groups and that are the most challenging exercise that you'll do in the workout because you want to do exercises like this when you're fresh. So I always choose the exercise that I want to see the biggest gains in to put first in my primary workout. I always pair a push and a pull movement in my primary workout. So I'm doing dips and pull-ups today. And these are, there's many reasons why pairing exercises for opposing movements or opposing muscle groups is beneficial. One is for efficiency. So if I was just to do straight sets of dips, then I'd need probably at least three minutes recovery between each set to be able to perform maximally. Less than three minutes, I'm gonna see a decline in the amount of reps that I can do from set to set, or a, a steep decline. When I do opposing exercises like this, you can rest two minutes between sets, and you see even less of a decline than if you were doing straight sets with the dips in the amount of reps that you can do. So that's the first one. The second one is for structural balance. So it trains the body, uh, the, the pushing and pulling system in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's really beneficial to prevent injuries and just to create symmetry in your body. And then third is that the decline that you normally see over the reps in a set, uh, from set to set, like if you do five sets and you can do you know, eight dips in your first set and by the fifth set, you can only do four reps. If you're doing opposing movements like this in a one-to-one -one ratio, you usually see less of a decline in the amount of reps that you can do, which means that you do more total volume. When you select the exercises that you do for your primary workout, I recommend choosing exercises that you can do for between five and eight repetitions for people that are new to calisthenics. Absolute beginners, if you've never done any training before, this advice isn't good for you. This is for those of you who have done at least a little bit of training, but are still considered in that beginner phase. And the five to eight rep range is really good for several reasons. Doing less than five reps means that you're probably doing an exercise that is so challenging for you that it's hard to get the technique right. Because if you're only able to barely do, you know, three or four reps per set, it's quite possible that the exercise is a little bit too challenging for you to master the correct technique. And if you're doing more than eight reps, then it's probably too easy for you. So that five to eight rep range is a nice little sweet spot. It's also a good rep range to still be able to get some really good volume. And for building muscle, volume really matters. I'll talk about that in a minute. And it also allows for a good range of progressive overload where you can you know, choose the progression that's gonna be right for you. So what do I mean by that? Like once you can do five sets of eight reps with really good technique, then you can probably go to a slightly more challenging progression or add a little bit of weight. Like for example, with dips or pull-ups, I could add a little bit of weight with a dip belt and then drop back down to that five rep range and work up to being able to do eight reps again. So it allows for really good use of progressive overload as well. <clears throat> Two really important concepts for you to consider to build muscle, not just with calisthenics, but with weights as well, is time under tension and volume. So 
You can see that I'm using a three second or a two to three second, I don't know my metronome right now, um, eccentric. So what that does is, when you're using a slow controlled eccentric like that, that's actually superior for building muscle because it does more damage to the muscle fibers, which is the uh, stimulus for hypertrophy. And then the other thing that you want to think about is total volume. So the amount of volume that you do on the one muscle group. So this is why I do five sets in a primary workout. Five sets of five reps is 25 reps. Five sets of eight reps is 40 reps. So you're doing somewhere between 25 and 40 reps in your primary workout. And then we're gonna add volume with supplementary lifts, which I'll do once I finish these five sets. So paying close attention to the tempo and maintaining that same tempo for every rep and also working to maintain the same amount of reps for all sets because you don't wanna do eight reps on your first set and five reps on the last set. It would be better to do seven reps on all sets and then progress towards being able to do eight reps on all sets because that's a more accurate way of using progressive overload and it gives more total volume. So it's really important to choose a progression that you can maintain the same amount of tempo and get the same amount of reps for all sets with really good technique. And I recommend a two minute rest between sets in your primary workout because it's enough for you to have good recovery so you can still perform well, but it doesn't take too long and make the workout drag on for ages. All right, so I'm on my fifth set now, and I'm filming this one really to show you what the difference between the first set and the fifth set wants to look like in your workout. So you're going to see that I'm definitely gonna struggle on my last couple of reps here, but hopefully I'm gonna get seven reps. I'll definitely get six. And you know, if I get seven good reps, then I know that in my next workout, I can try for eight reps, but I wouldn't get eight reps for all five sets, but I might get eight reps for the first set and then seven for the next four. Then the next workout, eight reps for the first two sets and then seven for the next and so on and so forth. And that's how you use progressive overload. But if I just go to max effort on every set and say I do eight, nine reps in my first set, but only four or five in the last set, I can't use progressive overload effectively. So let's see how I go with this fifth and final set. tough another thing to talk about you can see I'm quite out of breath is um breathing so it's really advantageous to hold your breath during the concentric phase you can produce more force so I just kind of breathe in I'll take one or two breaths on the eccentric but then I hold my breath and push and then go and push again so I'm really holding my breath on that way up. All right, let's see if I can do seven reps on the pull-ups for my fifth set. Well, it was tough, but I did still get it. Still got up and still did a three second eccentric. All right, now it's time for supplementaries. Now we're on to the supplementary exercises. And I just do, there's different ways you can do supplementaries, but basically you wanna think that the idea is that we can now work on your weak links of your body. So 
in a hypertrophy phase, I really like using weights for supplementaries. Of course, you can still do calisthenics if you want, but I really like the eight to 10 repetition range for most supplementary exercises because I really want to add a lot of volume now. So I don't want to be doing exercises where I can only do five, six, seven reps. It's not going to add enough volume for what I want. So for me in this workout, I'm really looking to build more size in my chest and my back. So I'm going to be doing a chest press now, a 30 degree incline pronated grip dumbbell chest press. And I'm doing the incline because, you know, the dip would replicate more of a decline. So the lower fibers of the chest. So I want to do an incline to get the upper fibers of the chest. And then I'm going to be pairing that with a pulling movement as well. So let's go. Let's see how I go in my first set. So of course you could do a push up or something, but I've got dumbbells and a bench, so I'm going to make use of them. We still want the slow eccentric. You can definitely go closer to failure here because when you're doing your supplementaries, you're, we're really trying to take everything out of the muscles that you can. So in those primary exercises where you're doing a compound lift and in this workout it was calisthenics, I much more want to be able to maintain the same amount of reps for all sets so that I know when I can go up. But when it comes to the supplementaries, I just want to blast my muscles. So if I go to total failure, then I can just drop the weight for the next set, and there's no problem in doing that. I also do shorter recovery times in the supplementary workout, only about 90 seconds between sets, just because, again, you're already fatigued, you don't need to be doing max effort, and I just want to get as much as I can in in the short amount of time that I've got to work out. I'm using a metronome for this exercise because I've got really strict hold times. So the more of a novice you are, the less variety you need in your workouts. So people that are newer to calisthenics will get, get a better result from doing less exercises and just more sets. So <clears throat> if you're really, really new, you would get a really good result just from doing like eight to 10 sets of push-ups and ring rows, for example. Pull-ups will probably be too hard for you when you're really new. Um, and then if you're a little bit more advanced then you could do like what i've done here where you do five sets of pull-ups and dips and then you could say do uh, three or four sets of what i'm doing here and then a little bit of auxiliary work at the end for the rotator cuff and that's it because i'm a little bit further on i'm doing a little bit more variety so i'm going to do three sets of these chest press and single arm ring rows and then i'll do three sets of some chest flies and some bent over lateral raises and then i'll move into my rotator cuff work
so you can see <clears throat> the first set of this chest press I did 20 kilograms or 44 pounds and I did eight reps but it was a little bit of a challenge for me and so I dropped back down to 17 and a half kilos but then I did 10 reps in that set so I'll stay on this weight this is a good weight it's a good weight that I can control the eccentric I can maintain good technique I can keep my scapula you know depressed and retracted and um, you know I can really keep the intention in my pecs and when you're doing hypertrophy training you know after you've done your compound lifts like what I did the dips and the pull-ups the supplementary exercises you really want to do exercises where you can really hammer the muscles that you're trying to grow and you can really feel those muscles working and so this is a great exercise for that as long as you do the right weight all right so I finished my chest press and ring rows and now I'm going to be doing some uh, flat supine dumbbell chest flies and some bent over lateral raises <clears throat> and I want to take a moment to explain the reason why I progress through the exercises like this so I've explained why you do your most complex exercise first you want to do it when you're fresh so that you can perform the best and make real gains with the big movements like dips and pull-ups then I moved to a less complex exercise and the way I did that was the single arm ring row is less complex because my feet are fixed on the ground it's a simpler movement than a pull up and the dumbbell chest press is less complex because it's an open kinetic chain movement where my body's fixed in place and my arms are moving versus a dip which is a closed kinetic chain movement where my hands are fixed in place and my body's moving <clears throat> Excuse me. Closed kinetic chain movements are generally more complex, a little bit more challenging for the body to do. Now I'm moving to an even less complex set of exercises because now this is a single joint exercise. So it's no longer considered a compound lift. It's not using multiple joints like the elbow and the shoulder in all of the movements that I've done so far in the workout, making it less complex. So it's a simpler movement and it's really there to just now I'm like really isolating down on the muscle groups that I really want to target. And in this workout for me, it's the pecs and I'm doing the bent over lateral raise just for structural balance. I always want to do that one-to-one -one push pull ratio so that I'm training structural balance in every joint in my body. So it's an equal push to pull uh, in every workout. All right, here we go. Let's do my first set. <clears throat> Oh, and I'm using this D roller so that I can get full range of motion with my scapula for retraction and protraction. And I only come to here so that I maintain tension through my pecs at all times. If I go higher than that, my pecs are going to deload. <clears throat> And I want to keep maximum tension in my pecs at all times. And I'm even doing less than 90 seconds rest between sets now. Purely because I don't mind if, I'm, if I can't perform at maximal effort on these exercises. I'm really just trying to get more volume in, in as little amount of time as possible. Trying to keep the workout um, somewhere, you know, around that one hour, 15 minute, maybe an hour and a half max. And again, I'm con consciously not bringing the dumbbells all the way together because it keeps... Uh, my muscles under tension the whole way through the set which is what I want more time under tension more damage to the muscle fibers more damage to the muscle fibers more muscle hypertrophy <clears throat> and you can see I'm choosing weights where I don't have to kip to move the weight I'm really trying to isolate the movement I've just been asked a question on our YouTube channel, which is 
a pretty common question. People say for hypertrophy, is it better to train higher intensity, lower frequency, or lower intensity and higher frequency? And the answer is both. Um, and what I mean by that is like, what's good for hypertrophy and what's good for strength development is once you're past the beginner stage where you know, you're better to just do more frequent, less complex workouts, and you need to mix things up to force adaptation, which is like where I'm at. It's good to do different types of programming. So, you know, it's good to do four to six week program blocks and do two program blocks using a similar um, set of exercises or a similar method of programming before you mix it up again. And you can do a higher intensity workout with less frequency through the week so you have more rest for, uh, more time for recovery because recovery is when the growth happens or you can do vice versa you can do the lower intensity and more frequency i think what's more important is is to understand when it's time to deload and to make sure that your recovery is on point always so for me the way that i'm training at the moment i'm doing six days a week training but i deload on day five and six so i do four days a week of higher intensity higher volume like what you're seeing here and then on day five and six, I do a deload day. And then on day seven on Sunday, I do nothing. So I'm deloading every week. Now, if you were training five or six days a week at a higher intensity or higher volume, then you need to look out for the um, signs of overreaching. And you're overreaching when you just can't perform as well as you could in the last workout or last week for no reason. So it doesn't matter how hard you try, you just can't do the same. And when you're in that state, you wanna do a deload week of at least five days and five days where you only do 40% total volume. So if you want my blanket answer, what's better for you? If you're doing calisthenics and you're wanting to build muscle, I believe higher frequency, lower intensity is better because you're still gonna get muscle hypertrophy. But with calisthenics, we're trying to develop skill in movements. You know, everybody's, most people doing calisthenics, even if you're here to build muscle and that's why you're watching this video, most people have movement goals. You know, they wanna do a planche or they wanna do a front lever or a muscle up or a one arm pull up or a handstand push up or whatever it is. And it's not just about building muscle and strength for those. It's about building movement knowledge, movement vocabulary. So learning how to do the movement, learning how to control the scapula properly during the movements, all those things. And that comes from repetition. That's a skill like any other skill that needs to be built through repetition. So yeah, I prefer more frequency and a lower intensity in your workout. So you're training a little bit low, like at about 70 to 80% max effort but you're getting a lot of volume in and you're banking that up through the week and you're recovering, you know, from week to week so that you make sure that you can perform every week. So I've done five rounds of my primary lifts, seven reps per round, so that's 35 reps. Then I did uh, three rounds of the first supplementaries and I'm just adding up the reps for the chest. I did eight, then 10, 10, so that's 28. So that's 63 reps on my chest. And then I did three rounds of eight reps on the chest flies. So that's 24. So that's 80, 87 reps. So it's a good amount of volume for muscle hypertrophy. And considering that I do that twice a week and then I do a deload workout as well, you know, it means in the one week that I'm getting close to 200 reps uh, on my chest and that's just in this program phase. So it's a good amount of volume to get good hypertrophy and especially considering that I'm Doing the kind of time under tension that I'm doing where I'm doing the controlled eccentric on every rep. So now <clears throat> To finish off my workout. I'm doing some rotator cuff work. So rotator cuff I think is a majorly under targeted area in upper body workouts and I'm doing this Cuban rotation here. I've only just progressed to this Cuban rotation for the first time in years since I had a slap tear. I had slap tears in both shoulders and without surgery I've gotten back to where I am now and a massive part of my rehab journey has been rotator cuff work like this. The Cuban rotation is a much more challenging progression than some of the earlier ones that I used. So if you've got weak shoulders, don't start with this. You start with other progressions. 
but um, you know to finish off my workout now I'm just going to do four sets of eight reps of these Cuban rotations and that's it that's my recommendations for how to structure a good upper body calisthenics workout to build muscle if you've got any questions let me know hit me up in the comments if you got value out of this please share it with a friend take the time now hit that share button copy the link put it in an email in a message whatever and share it with someone that you think could get value out of this really helps grow the channel and of course subscribe like the video watch one of those videos there if you like this and you want to see more and i'll see you in my next video